Got a dream in a tear last night Watched the world fade out of sight Seen the ghosts of time preside Eagles soared and falcons cried Sleeping phoenix on a rise Abundance and strange the skies Hello and welcome to Phoenix Rising and welcome to this uh, these ongoing looks at, uh, or snapshots, if you will, of the closing of the cycle, the closing of the Cross of Planning cycle that began in 1615, that's going to come to a close in the beginning of 2027. And this Cross of Planning, one of the things that it's brought for us is something that really is very much in the news. It's all around us, and it's something we call global warming. The fact is, when we entered into the Cross of Planning at the beginning of the 17th century, it's also coincidental to the beginning of what we would call the Industrial Age. That is, uh, the beginning of the establishment of all kinds of factories, pollution, uh, all of the various things that were going to lead to the, the heating up in that sense of the planet. The advent of the nine-centered being in, in 1781, and the nine-centered being came into the world. If we could do a comparison between the seven-centered being and the nine-centered being, the one thing that would be obvious in terms of their difference would be temperature. That is, uh, we nine-centered beings run hotter than our ancestors. And it's coincidental to this age that is heating up, but it's also about what this is really for, in a sense. The heating up is about mutation. It's mutation, it's mutation that is the theme of all of this, the mutation that's taking place in the 55th gate and the 49th gate, the histidin codon, the, the key, if you will, to the genetic transformation of the solar plex center. And all of this mutative possibility is driven in that sense by heat. Our vast population, the potential for the arising of the exact mm, mutative potentials out of such a vast pool all lead to the 2027 and the door opening up to a, a deep transition in the emergence of something new and the completion of something that is uh, the slowing down, if you will, of the human dynamic and the opening up of something new that is the rave. Now all of this, this entire period that we're living in, that the intensity of what is going on, the heat of all of this, it's all about one thing and one thing only. We have a huge mutation coming and heat and global warming on the larger sense makes it all possible. Anyway, something to think about on with the show. <laughs> I'm a generator, a 1-4 generator, triple split, emotional, so I've got to wait for things to come to me. And when things come, I've got to give myself time, <laughs> time to go through my waves and <laughs> slowly learning it. <laughs> it's taking a long time. Yes, this because I have an open root also, so the, the pressure I've always felt was so strong, always in a hurry, and actually, I actually experienced a different kind of calm since, since the war immersion. Yeah. It was on the third day that I, I, I told Ra, what did you do? You took away my hurry. <laughs> great, feels great. Uh, it came to me. <laughs> it was um, a 3-5 projector from Barcelona, from the Cross of Contagion. He, well, we were chatting, it was an, an, um, on a workshop of a weekend, so we were chatting about a typology. Era. And then later he came to me and said, I think you'll get interest, you'll be interested about this. What do you think? I said, don't know. But, well, yeah. He said, oh, I would like to give you 
something I don't know about it, but I know I have a good friend who is an analyst. I'll ask her to write a little bit about it and let you know about yourself if you want and if you know your time of birth. Three weeks later, he came to my house and he gave me those pages. I was, wow, what is this, you know? How can she know? She's never even seen me. And I was so amazed. I made an appointment with her for the next weekend to, to have a reading. And yeah, that was six years ago. Huh. <laughs> Has turned everything around. <laughs> yeah, I always thought I have to go for things. And now I know I can wait and trust. Yeah. Trust myself and trust my body and just just be. Uh, yeah, it's it's really it's a different different life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such a present. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> I always had a lot of problems with my digestive system because I am a number one, right. like very primitive digestive system. So. It's not easy for me. I, I, I don't manage to be radical like that because, yeah, I have to follow my strategy and inner authority. And if I have the things totally like carrot, carrot is something I can eat or fruits. That's how I start my day with fruits, yeah. But for other food, it's kind of I need it to be beautiful, to look good. And my, my tone is the third tone. So, and then. Sometimes I don't know, is it my body who wants it really just pure or is it my mind imposing it on me, you know? So, yeah, still, oh, since, yeah, 2006, because I'm in the, I'm, I'm studying it too, so I, yeah. And of course, it has brought an incredible change to my life, full, fully. But I still fall sometimes. I love cakes. Yeah. So I sometimes still fall into the stupidity of taking, of eating cakes. And actually, I don't notice that that makes me very much. But on other occasions when I'm with people and fall into the traps of eating mixed food that is, yeah, then it's, <laughs> it's a problem, yeah. Hello, and welcome to your weekly Neutrino weather report. And uh, as you look out over the weather map this week, the one thing that I can say is that it's going to be cloudy. Melancholy. Melancholy is going to be in the air. And melancholy is going to be in the air because we're about to go through a series of very, very individual transits of the Sun-Earth. Beginning this week with the sun in the first gate and the earth in the second gate, and then we'll move on to the 43rd gate and the 23rd gate. We're dealing with a very, very deeply individual influence. And when we get to the 4323, we're going to have an awful lot of people on this planet saying, I know, I know, I know, I know, because that's the language of the 4323. But one of the things to keep in mind about this deeply individual you know, triggering that's there in the program is that it brings something that's called melancholy. Melancholy, sadness. If you have this in your design, that is, if you have individual activations in your design, melancholy is a part of your life. And of course, the danger in melancholy is that you think there's a reason for it. That is, you wake up sad and you think it's because of your, you know, your lover, your dog, uh, the president. Uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference what it really is. And of course, this is the moment that you're lost. The reality is that if you're carrying individual activations, melancholy is a chemistry for creativity. It's the muse. It's the muse. And so important to understand that you need to have creative outlets if you carry a lot of individual activations in your design. But think about what's happening now with the transit. You know, if you don't have these particular individual gates, or if you have the harmonic gates at the other end of the channels, so that suddenly you're going to have a definition, most people are going to experience the melancholy without necessarily having the creative outlet. 
In other words, they're going to get stuck in the sadness, they're going to get stuck in the reason making, and of course you're going to end up with a situation where there's going to be an awful lot of people that are going to be, well, rather uncomfortable. Very important, you know, to recognize this. And if you don't have these, you know, this is an opportunity to take advantage of creative possibilities to be able to discover what is possible for you. Because if you enter into anything correctly, it will be an advantage for you. But one thing to keep in mind this week, Venus in the 50th gate is now in the fourth line, going to be in the fourth line for the first three days of the week. Now, the 50th gate is the cauldron. It is one of the gates of the cross, of the laws. It carries with it a tremendous power in terms of the way in which the rules of the tribe operate. And the fourth line is the line of corruption. So something to think about. In the first three days of the week, during that transit of Venus to the 50th gate to the fourth line, some rules can be broken. Well, follow your strategy and authority. And then the weather is your pleasure. Have a good week. It seems like the one thing that mind really likes to do is just get in the way of things. I mean, isn't that mind? Isn't that just the way that it is? That, you know, life is happening and mind is, is already jumping in there and saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is too fast, this is too slow, we've got to go this way, we've got to go that way, we have to change this, we have to change that. It's where human beings live. They live in a world of mental interference. And everything about the nature of what human design represents, what it means to experiment with your strategy and authority is that you enter into a kind of, uh, well, it's almost a divine state, if I can put it that way, of non-interference, of not interfering with your life, of not getting in the way of your own life, of not allowing your mind to distort what's possible for you to see or possible for you to live. You cannot know unless you allow it to happen. Everything about understanding what it is to be a nine-centered being, to understand that we are a bio-consciousness, that binary consciousness that is us, is so important to recognize that they both have their jobs. You know, we have a form consciousness that we can rely on. It is what strategy and authority is based on. Your type, your definition, the mechanics that are there in the way in which you operate on this plane. It's there that you can trust the capacity inherent in you to be successful on this plane, to navigate this plane correctly. And mind, mind is all about outer authority, not inner. This is our dilemma. You know, our dilemma is the assumption that our, mind, our minds are here to be inner and outer authority, that our mind is going to decide what's right for us and at the same time going to speak for us. But please understand that if your mind is interfering with your life, what you're going to share with others is never fully going to be the truth. The mind always has an agenda. It's always going to wrap things around in its own way. You see, strategy and authority, what it does primarily, aside from allowing you the opportunity to be able to see what it's like to move through this plane as yourself and to see its value. What is really significant is that it takes this authority away from mind to interfere with your life. Non-interference. Get out of the way and see what an incredible ride is there for you. Dream in a tear last night, watch the world fade out of sight. Seen the ghosts of time preside, eagle sword and falcons cry. Sleeping phoenix on a rise. Abundance and strange disguise.